uh, lift pulling us up, but it's keeping the nose wheel out of the muck. You're saying 120 minimum rotor speed, is that what you said? Or? Yeah, I don't want it to go slower than 120, but I just, I just keep it all the way back on the stick. Okay. And then just use the throttle to maintain speed like you would normally. The thing is it will uh, decelerate quickly because we have thrust pulling that way. So we do have to keep the rotor, I mean the throttle arm up a little bit in order okay. to move. Okay. Dana, we're up 170. Got one airplane coming in that way for 30. Got this other aircraft coming out on the taxiway. So we might have to dump the rotor anyway, but it's it's more of a yeah. example of what can happen anyway. Okay. But you do have to monitor and carefully watch it when you're doing it this way. Do not let the rotor speed get below 120 because then you will smack the tail in your sparrow hawk. Okay. Without leveling it and pulling it, pushing the yeah, stick forward first. With, yeah, you got to push the stick forward and then bring throttle out. Otherwise, you get zipping along, right? Because we've got you know, almost 3,000 RPMs in it, which normally would be zipping us right along, right? Yeah, you bet. And Piper at uh, Alpha One, are you going to be ready to go? Negative. We're going to have to run up. Uh, if you want to go Alpha Two behind us, go ahead. Charter Point Two Four Seven Alpha Whiskey will take uh, runway Three Zero at Alpha Two. Now we won't have to uh, rotate again. Okay. We're going out here. Then this first engine's okay. Yeah. We'll just keep the stick all the way back. Then we will have a tailwind. See the the sock out here going the wrong way. Uh-huh. Okay, taxiing on. I'm just going to bump the throttle up a little bit. Okay. Because as we get a tailwind, we're going to have to have some forward speed in order to compensate for what yeah. we're doing. Counteract that, yeah. See how it's dropping off a little bit there? Yeah. That's holding steady. It's dropping off a little bit. See, it's the uh, rotor RPM is down to 200. Throttling up. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Thanks for traffic helicopter nine, whiskey Mike, four miles to the south, southbound, five thousand six hundred. Little right on the stick. There you go. Ooh, a lot of right on the stick. Whoa. Yeah, you had it pointed left. That's All how right. I knew it was going to have to have a right. <laughs> Ideally, I should have brought this up to a higher airspeed before I lift it off than, than normal. Yeah, with the it. same exact airspeed. It? Okay. It's just that you'll have a faster ground speed. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's not nearly as efficient to take off at the tailwind. It's a really bad idea. Even a two or three knot tailwind makes a huge difference in a gyroplane. Wow. So we're just going to go out straight out to the tree and then we'll turn left and go do our maneuvers. Okay. Well, people are going backwards on the runway. Okay. <laughs> Got 12 gallons of fuel, that looks good. Engine instruments look good for departure from the airport. Yep. Okay, clear left and turn left. Keep the nose nice and level as you make the turn. Spanish work traffic, airplane 247 Alpha Whiskey departing west from runway 30 Spanish work. I mean, come on up a little higher than the. Yeah, we'll go up to 5,500. Okay. Okay, turn right, out towards the point there. Okay. Go ahead, just level the nose down a little bit. Okay. There you go.
big old houses out here mixed in with the little yeah. farmhouses. That's amazing. It's some pretty big ones. Is there any one community um, in the greater Salt Lake area that tends to have whole bunches of these monster homes and gated oh, community yeah. areas? And, or are they all over Orem and Provo and every which way? No, there are certain areas of the cities that have them. Uh, the river bottoms as you come out of Provo Canyon and just follow along the river tends to have a, a large number of big houses. And then mostly up along the benches is more affluent than down in the valley. But, you know, right in the river bottoms, there's some big houses. That's where I live. I don't know where the people keep coming from that can afford these homes, but they just <laughs> keep building them. Yeah, I thought they were favoring 1-2 as well, but whatever they want, I guess. Okay, keep coming straight ahead. We'll use that intersection there where that car's just coming up. Uh, just a minute, I'm not... Right there. Okay, yes. As the center point for turn around a point. So we'll okay. be back around, headed this direction when we're completed. Okay, so it's about a mile yeah. and a half radius, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, it's one block radius. That's, oh, that's one block. I'm sorry, it's not yeah. a mile. So you're, um, you're about six blocks per mile here in Utah, don't you? Seven. I don't know what it is, really. About 12 where I live. Okay, so... Um, just remember, this is just a ground reference maneuver, so whatever it takes to compensate for wind. Okay, anyway, about one and a half of these. Ten miles to west, close to Canada. 5,600. Yeah, just wait until we come a beam the point, and then we'll start our turn. All right. Okay, it looks good. Nice and easy. Just don't let the point go ahead of you or behind you because there's no wind really to speak of, right? Boy. Looking good. There's our one block radius right there. Yeah, I'm aiming for one and a half, so. That'd be fine. Spanish Fork traffic, uh, 478 is firing the pattern towards the southwest. Spanish Fork traffic, Channel Plane 247 Alpha Whiskey is in the north end of the practice field east of West Mountain at 6000. Keep that center point right off your shoulder. That looks good. Just keep your eyes open for that traffic might come out from the airport. So. About the same distance, Thank wait first to come around. Nine weeks in mind. Santa Quinn Towers, 6,000 feet southbound. Site for traffic, I'm at 889 or Delta Charlie's in Rattle Bavaria, runway 1-2. Good, just spiraling in just a little. Okay. See how it's a little ahead of your shoulder there. Yes, it is. All right. That's better.
Battery Carol 47869, four miles southwest of the field. We're just coming up uh, east of the towers on westbound, 6,500 feet maneuvering. Good, getting a little bit low. Get you back up a little bit. There you go, good. Good, that was a good job. Okay, we're just going to come up to this next road and we'll do S turns, turning to the left and then one to the right, right? So pick a point that's off to your left along that road that you're going to have as your center point. That's going to be the two centers of the S along no, that? No, no, we're, we're doing S turns along a road. Okay. So pick a point and we'll do a half a turn right. to the left do along that, that point. we will do that funny intersection there unless it's too close. Okay, let's do that one then. And that's where we're going to have the center point. Center point of the bottom part of the S, all right. Okay, don't turn too sharp because it's going ahead of us now, right? Get too sharp, it's still ahead of us, right? It's almost 45 degrees ahead of us now. Oh, right? I was with this one on my shoulder down there. That oh, exactly that's a really there. close one. Okay, go ahead and use that oh, one. I was doing that tighter one. Okay, go It'll ahead. It'll put me over this big old yellow gray barn almost. Usually I do a little bigger one okay. than that just because they're easier. All right, well, I'll. Okay, when you get across the road, pick one that's the same distance out the other direction, right? Okay. You don't let the nose down, you're going too fast, losing okay. a little altitude. Yeah, you should come square across the road. And pick a point that's the same distance out this direction and come okay. around right. Uh -huh. Don't let the nose up. Getting a little slow. There you go. Yeah, you're right, that was too tight a one I picked. You can't see it, can <laughs> you? Uh -uh. Not very well, but I'll get it. That's why I like to do a little bigger ones, they're a little easier to see. Understand now. Yeah, see what you mean. Oh well, live and learn. Yep, keep coming around right, because it's getting a little behind us here. There's our airplane way up there, no worries. We're gonna try it again, but we're just gonna go a lot bigger one this time. Yeah. Just go straight ahead here for a minute. We'll turn back around to the right. We'll make 180 to the right, and then we'll come try it again on the same road. Okay. But just go straight ahead for a little while. We'll get a little distance this way, and then we'll make our turn. Okay. There were a little more stability on that dash there, so this thing wouldn't jiggle so much. But I guess well, we could probably put something in there to make it dampen a little bit, reinforce something on that car yeah. carpeted horizontal surface back there, or even just put that. a rubber donut on the back of it so that it isn't as connected to it. Might not transfer as much energy yeah. from the rotor to it. Maybe so. Yep, coming around right. Okay, coming right. This time our first turn will be to the right and then to the left, right? So that we'll be going south along the road. Okay. Okay, turn right. And we'll wait till we cross the road. Down Follow down. this little road right here. And a backwards S, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll call them two turns across the road. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, but we'll use this. Uh, intersection over here, one intersection away from us as the center point. Space okay. traffic, Arrow okay. four seven eight six nine. So we'll be over the top of this intersection. That intersection will be the middle. Eight eight nine R Delta Charlie, heading over to the south from uh, takeoff. And then that point down there will be where we cross it again, right? 
okay. where we started our turn coming around back to the left, and then we'll have to use the ditch line that projects out from that after that, okay? All right. Good, so this intersection one block away from us will be the center point. Where the dirt road intersects the three paved roads. No, just the real intersection right there. Well, yeah, I guess it does intersect with the dirt road. Okay. Yep. And then we'll go all the way to the bend where we roll on to the other direction. Sure. Oops. So the top should be that farm Up right there. there. sheet metal buildings are, okay. Quantum huts or whatever you call those round top things. Yeah, just that funny looking farm there. It's a lot easier to do it bigger. Yeah. Sorry, I cut the corner here too much. Yeah, that's all right. Just don't get too particular about it. It's pretty dang close. And we want our shoulder to be square with it as we hit the top. There's the top. And then we're just kind of coming nice and around, just keeping that point off our shoulder. Don't look too much at where we're going. Okay. Keep that point off. So you got to turn a little more, a little more, a little more. See, it's behind us. Yep. There you go. That's better. And don't turn too much. Don't want to get ahead of us. There we go. If we keep that in the right spot, then this will be in the right spot. This is a ground reference maneuver, so the idea is to look at the ground reference to make sure we're going where we want to go. Right. Yep, get a little nose up, got slowed down there. Okay. So you got to do it kind of more level. There we go. As we cross the road, look out to the left to see that, that big disc. Ditch intersection right there off yes. your shoulder? And we'll use that as right. the center point. Okay. Just want to pick something that's about the same distance away. Okay. That way it makes the same size of turns. As we get up here to the top of this ditch, we should be square with our shoulders along the, the ditch line. Cut the corner a little too much again. Yeah, if you just keep that right off this over, that looks pretty good. Nice, big, easy S-turns. And then it should be this ditch point right there should be the so other it, end. It turns into the three paved uh, yep. intersection, okay. Just a little fast, see how it went ahead of us a little bit there. Yep. I wait a little late to start turning. Yeah, that's all right. You just kind of got to keep your eyes outside and looking at traffic and looking back to the point. That's pretty good. Okay. Now we're pretty close to our initial altitude. We varied on our speed a little yeah. bit because we're supposed to stay within 10 knots which is 12 miles an hour okay. and 100 feet plus or minus. Okay. On our, when we're doing it for the examiner. Okay. Right now we're just kind of getting used to picking out points on the ground and flying around them at the specific distances, right? Okay. Want to do a rectangle next out here? Or? Um, normally or we would, but we're just going to head back low towards. Low on fuel, all right. Yeah, we're not really low, but we're at the point where we want to head back toward the airport. Okay. So just go straight along this road, we'll go down to I-15, turn left toward the freeway, I mean toward the airport when we okay. get down there. What are these big trees that are yellow still here, the planet? Can you tell what variety Well, there's there? a lot of uh, willow trees, or the round ones are the Lo willow trees. Globular looking ones, yeah. Yeah, those are globe willow. They're the first ones to put leaves on in the spring and the last ones to put leaves that oh. didn't fall on the fall. And we hate those where I live because they seek out w your water pipes Absolutely. looking for water. And man, they'll just tear yeah. it up. Willow trees are good at that. Birch are not bad either, but yeah, birch don't grow where we live very much. You don't have enough water unless you have an artificial. Yeah, well, they don't grow too much here either, but we do get a lot of willows. And then a lot of people like the really tall poplar trees as windbreaks. They have a natural lifespan. It's kind of short, though, I'm, I'm told. Yeah, they grow really fast, they have really weak wood, yeah. and they don't 
live very long. A soft hardwood, <laughs> or a hard yeah. softwood, it's out of it. Yeah, they're pretty bad as far as that's concerned, but they make good windbreaks in orchards and things like that. For woodworking, I, I, be, I put all the trim in my house with that stuff, because it's a little, hard, little harder poplar. Oh, the poplar harder is than really pine, hard. But it didn't cost as much as oak or maple or something like that. Maple's really hard. Poplar's just, it's not a very fun wood to work with, but it grows fast. I mean, it doesn't take stain very well, but it was going to be painted anyway. Yeah, if you paint it, it's okay. Around here, we you mostly use uh, pine and not really even pine. It's a fir. Yeah. I use fir as the main wood for dump stuff. And that's, that's typical, too. That's just that run your vacuum cleaner into it, it'll dent it, you know? Oh, I, for sure, yeah. My favorite wood to work with is cherry. Not too hard. Ooh, yeah. Not too soft. A really nice wood to work with. But, you know, it does cost a penny more. Some of it's getting, <laughs> yeah, almost exotic, because they're rare. Yeah. Expensive, I suppose. Yeah. Prefer to stay at this altitude pretty much most of the way there, or do you care? Yeah, I'll probably stay up here a little bit, and then okay. when we cross the, the highway, start bringing it down a little bit. Five. You know, come over to the other side of the sure. freeway there, and then we'll turn left. We'll stay high as we come across the houses, and we'll stay tight to the highway interstate yeah. so that yeah. we don't bug anybody with noise. Too much noise, all right. And then we'll start our descent when we get. You know, about a mile away from center line. The industrial area there, all right? Yeah. Spanish work traffic, turn point 247 off of Whiskey. North eastbound along I-15, inbound for runway 3, excuse me, will be inbound for runway 12, Spanish work. We'll be turning it left, downwind for runway 12. That way we'll come into the wind, right? Yeah. Well, I can't tell what the wind's really doing right now. We'll have to kind of keep our eyes on it. I don't see the... The flag is flying just a little out at us, it looks like. Can't really tell. The windmills aren't really moving over there. Okay. So it doesn't look like there's a lot of wind, but when we left, the wind was favoring 1-2. And since I can't see a lot of wind, we'll just assume it's still favoring 1-2 okay. in general. We're landing left to right then. We'll, we'll cross over. We'll turn left down. We'll land base and then back up. Okay. Enter a crosswind. Crosswind, okay. Yep. But there's no traffic in the pattern. If there were, we'd have to give way to all traffic in the pattern and traffic entering the pattern. All right. Okay, let's start our descent down to 5-5. Five five. So that we're at pattern altitude as we enter the crosswind. Okay. Once I get to altitude I want, I would expect that to bring the throttle back up somewhat to get leveled in. Or well, probably we won't because as we turn uh, left downwind, we're going to drop it down to 500 feet below the pattern altitude for okay. fixed wing. So we'll go down to 5,000 feet. So we shouldn't really have to bring the power back up for a little while anyway. Okay. We will in order to level out, obviously. But we got another 700 feet to go. around left. 
Showing this is going to be a tailwind. Let's turn back around to the right. Okay. And we'll just make a, a right downwind for runway 30. Yep, yeah, just power up a bit. Looks good. That's fine for traffic to airplane 247 out for whiskey. It's going to turn around to the right. We'll make a right downwind. Runway 30, Spanish work. doesn't show any wind, but uh, over here we're we're seeing a pretty big headwind. We got a little for your traffic down in Montana. No, it's not just there. One fracture at Charlie High, just to the east of West Mountain. Uh, got a fair amount of left yeah. pedal in there. A little yeah. right pedal is what you want. There you go. Grab a concept. Okay. Here, now it's in the middle. Yeah, thanks for traffic down in Montana. You're just flying in the crowd. So you were fighting against my foot, pushing uh, right. That's what was going on. Yeah. Okay, uh, coming around right. Yep, see the flag over here at Macy's is now showing a tailwind going this direction, and that one's showing a tailwind going the other direction, so. Huh. No. Yeah, just be aware of it when you're coming down the runway. You might okay. get a tailwind shearing to a headwind. You can feel it right here kind of turbulent air right here. Yeah. So don't land really close to this end. All right, let's go on down a ways. Yeah, going down a ways, and hopefully it'll change from a tailwind back into a headwind. Okay. You can feel it kind of shaking the wind, kind yeah. of bounces you around a little bit. And the windsock here is showing us with the headwind. Good. So you're good to go now. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, you can feel the shear as we go through it. Yes, <laughs> I can. Now it feels pretty good down here. Good. Letting it sink down and then just bring it into ground effect. I'm going to put just a little more throttle in. Okay. Here's going to keep it flying. So we don't try and land too quickly. We'll just get down into ground effect. And then it's just like we were doing before when we were playing. We were trying to fly. Right? But just don't let it. Just slowly and smoothly pitch it up. And pitching up makes it go down if we do it slow enough. Pitching up makes it go down. Pitching up. There we go, pitching up some more. There you go, good. And I probably would have waited just a little longer for it to slow down before I, before I drop the nose. Then push it forward. Okay. Like we got flags going both directions right there. Look at that. <laughs> They're not that far apart either. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a storm. That's pretty good though. Those are those are both blowing pretty good about three knots at each other. <laughs> if you saw that in a painting, you'd be like, somebody goofed. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I 
like I made a little progress today. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Gotta do some more. More time. Yeah. I appreciate it. Go ahead and put the rotor brake on there. No, I love doing it, so. Buy it. If I didn't, if I wasn't teaching, I wouldn't be flying, so that's. Yeah, but it must be frustrating. You know, <laughs> as much you love to fly, to sit here, watch me screw up time after time, <laughs> and you could be doing something for yourself that's more gratifying. I oh, sure yeah. appreciate it. Uh, flying by yourself is the most fun. You know, that's just the way it is. You know, showing somebody else how to fly, that's like second place, but it's still good. Um, the demo flights are fun, too. If you're showing somebody without having to teach them, that's fun. Yeah, I bet. But um, that's all fun. You know, maybe if I was flying as much as I was last year or the year before where I'm flying every day for six or eight hours, oh. then it can get a little tiring. But at this point, not flying that much, so it's fun. Any reason I can't lock this at this point? Or uh, no, it stopped, so you can go ahead and lock it in. And just bring it around to the front with the rotator. <laughs> 